So that little moment where you can see she's nervous and she's kind of wiping her hands off on her dress. The internet thought maybe that she wiped, she touched the candle (laughs) and wiped the magic off. It's not what happens. Hi, I'm Jared Bush, co-writer and director of Encanto. Hi, I'm Yvette Marino. I am one of the producers of Encanto. And I'm Sharice Castro-Smith, co-writer and co-director of Encanto. And this is Notes on a Scene. This is Antonio's gift ceremony, and Mirabel is walking him to his door, which is a very difficult moment for Antonio and even more difficult for Mirabel because she is experiencing her gift ceremony all over again. So from really early on, we knew we wanted to have truth in materials. Like if it's a tile, it cannot turn into jelly and bend and things, right? So it had to like actually move the way those materials would move. One of the amazing animators came up Mm -hmm. with this idea of them flipping over to kind of express emotion. It ended up being just one of the most amazing ways that the house could express itself in the movie. The other thing that I love in this moment, if you listen, is the sound design of the tiles. You know, Mm -hmm. that's something that uh, our sound designer, Shannon, spent a lot of time actually kind of musicalizing the way the tiles come out. So it's not just one sound. You get a little personality and you also get a little bit of warmth from the house. So it feels like this living thing that's almost a musical instrument. It's like every chance we got, we tried to add little things that the house does. The fact that it puts these spotlights on Antonio, but it doesn't do it super expertly. You know, the, it's a little off, you know, the lights don't go at the same time, it's not perfect. And we, we love those little imperfections in the house. They gave it a little extra personality. Okay. The, <laughs> the I need you every time, every time, yeah. very, very early on. It's like, as you were saying, it's her best friend. He looks up to her so much. And for him to just say, I need you. Yeah, it's so sweet. How do you say no to that? Mina Bell has glass in her glasses. And so we had to look at the reflections in every single frame of every moment to make sure that you're still able to read her eyes through that. And we were constantly adjusting how much reflection, literally frame to frame, to make sure that the emotion was never muted, but at the same time, you never thought that the the glasses weren't there. So that was something that we spent a lot of time to figure out. Obviously right now, she's in the shadows. It's lit by these lamps from the house and from candlelight, from the magic candle itself. So light played a huge part in this whole sequence as she's sort of stepping out of the shadows into the warmth of the courtyard. We talked a lot about Colombian culture, but in Latinx culture, how really it's it's the touching and the the closeness and and there's not a huge sense of space. And so really, even in the way like Julieta is holding, Mm. these two are holding hands together and it's all very natural and common. Mm -hmm. And so it's all these tiny little things that the animators put in that just, I love. I mean, that's something that, that both the animation department and our technical animation to go in and make sure that those interactions feel right. You can even see like there's hands on shoulders. These are little subtle moments that go a long way to really making it feel like you are steeped in that culture. Come on, let's get you to your door. So that is one of my favorite lines when she says, come on, let's get you to your door because of the way that she says it to him. Even though she's clearly dying on the inside, this is impossible for her. She's not trying to show any of that weight to him. She's effortless and you can do this. And I always loved it because it shows such a strength of character for her Mm -hmm. uh, to make this choice in that moment. You can see the way that he's looking at her now, how much that means and giving him that confidence. It really shows what a strong character Mita Bell is, even at her own expense. Look at that face. (laughs) Just look at that face. I love him so. 
I'd say pay special attention to the way that she breathes through the next moment. He can't see her face anymore and she's looking forward and that this is gonna be hard and I'm gonna, I need to go through it. It's something that we actually spent a lot of time and, and redid the animation several times to get that expression just right so that she wasn't pitying herself. It was it just, she knows that what's about to happen is gonna hurt. Oh, and then also her costume. We were really thinking that this moment of becoming in the family Madrigal is like a little bit like a first communion. It's a rite of passage. Antonio has his like cute white little suit and Mirabel has her like little kind of like first communion looking dress. It's like this ritual that they all have to go to. The embroidery on her dress, which is little butterflies because she doesn't have her gift yet. Everybody's costume, once they get their gift, has something to do with their gift. But this, she's like in this moment before it's happened, she's got butterflies because they don't know where her gift is going to be yet, so. We did something in this film that we don't do a lot of Disney animation, was, which was we played with depth of field quite a bit. So if you'll pay attention to the way Mirabel looks, you know, this is a flashback, so there's a, there's a little haziness, but behind her, we really blew out the background, the crowd there, well out of focus. So we're really paying attention to her. You get the sense of the weight of expectations, but without seeing individual people or individual expressions that would take your attention away from her. Little Mirabel is nervous, but expecting things to go well. Older Mirabel is remembering this moment and how hard that was and thinking back to, she's really reliving each step of that. So with each step up the stairs, she's getting closer to that moment that went so poorly for her. So I think what's really nice is there's this building tension over the course of the scene, which also helps the tension of, will Antonio get his gift or not? So you're kind of doing two things at the same time. Thinking about like how the magic of the door would look took a lot of different iterations. Like you can see here, there's this swirly magic and we wanted that magic to be reminiscent of the candle itself. So even matching the colors. And there's those little pops of light that are, are, are bokeh lighting, but we all called them focal lighting because they're not real sort of lens flares or anything. But we also matched those between the candle and the door so that you really got this connection of the magic between those two things. This is one of my favorite shots as Abuela because with no words, no dialogue, the animators are so amazing at getting all of the emotion and. Mm -hmm. And as you said, it really is their closest moment. Mm -hmm. And there's so much love, but we've already been through the whole, maybe you should just step aside moment. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. you should, you know, leave it to ever, everyone else. And so it, it kills me every time I see it. She was her favorite, right? Yeah. Like yeah. before it all went downhill. So that little moment where you know, can see she's nervous and she's kind of wiping her hands off on her dress. The internet thought oh, maybe right. that That's she right. wiped, she touched the <laughs> candle and wiped the magic off. It's not what happens. It's really just sort of like a, a little character moment. I don't even know if that was written in the script. I think that might've been from one of the animators in this moment thinking like, what would you do if you were that age? And okay, your, your hands might be a little sweaty, but also you want to sort of like look good as you're heading up there. So I thought it was such a wonderful, um, very specific um, character beat. This doorknob is very key because it's an M for Mirabelle, right? Because it's supposed to be her special door, but then at the end of the movie, spoiler alert, it's M again for the Madrigals, for the whole family. Here's something I absolutely love that lighting pulled off so well. We don't see the beginnings of this door starting to disappear. We see this expectation and she can't wait. And then little bit by little bit, you see the light start to fade away on the top of her head. The music is telling us things are not going the way they should, but also her expression is and the lighting is, but we hold off the actual reveal of what that look like just to be with her in that moment, which I thought was really emotionally effective. Abuela in this moment, like watching the candle flicker, which Mirabelle doesn't see. Like it's kind of the beginning of everything. It's the beginning of the downfall. It's the beginning of everything that Mirabelle has to fix in the movie, but not for the reasons that Abuela thinks so. 
no dialogue, but you see the the confusion on her face, yeah. the trying to process what's happening, the what does it mean? There's so much. I know there's so much going on in her mind right there. One of the things that we really liked here is that that notion that the candle doesn't flicker until after this moment. And one of the reasons we, we like that it is we always thought that, that there was a, a connection between uh, Abuela's unconditional love and the magic. And that when that door started to fade, that there might have been something in her unconditional love that that wavered. And as a result, the candle also wavered. So figuring out that timing and understanding those rules, even if we never convey them to the audience, was something that we had to know as we were creating the story. Will you use your gift to honor our miracle? Will you serve this community and strengthen our hope? This is another thing that was really tricky to figure out is this transition from the flashbacks into this moment back to real time. And we got a lot of help here, both visually in terms of the lighting going back and forth, but also if you listen to the sound, the sound design and the effect that you hear on a whale's voice, it isn't coming straight in. It's kind of echoey and a little dreamy and there's a little bit of a segue that happens uh, to get you back into this moment. This is like one of my favorite shots in the entire movie where we like transition between Abuela's just like terrified face just a Mirabelle right behind her who's also nervous but like and feeling so much but just for totally different reasons and how close they are in this movie but how far away they are. So Jermaine Franco composed our score and the theme that you're hearing right now is the theme that she wrote for the miracle, for the Encanto. And you can hear like this, is it going to happen, is it not going to happen? And right when he puts his hand on that doorknob, the theme starts to really ramp up and swell over that part. That theme keeps on coming through our story anytime there's this moment of miracle um, because it really underscores, I think, how important and wondrous it is for the family for the right reasons. I love this part because <laughs> you don't exactly know what his gift is going to be yet, but you do know that it is like worked out. We talked actually a lot about that toucan and how we were going to yeah. sort of establish what Antonio's gift was, how it was used, because like the fact is he communicates with words to animals and like sort of telepathically. <laughs> Those aren't toucan noises. That's actually Alan Tudyk that's been heavily processed. Uh, he did his homeworks. When he first came in, he told us that our bird sounds we had in there were not toucans. They were like some parrot. He's like, that's not a toucan. This is what a toucan sounds like. And he spent hours doing different toucan impressions. And we'd say dialogue to him in English and he didn't respond in toucan. And it was one of my favorite things. So if you really listen to it, you can actually kind of hear him making all of those noises as we were going through the scene, which I love. Of course they can come. Let's talk about a little coffee kid. Yeah, yeah. The first thing that he does, our little coffee kid here, the first thing that he does is yay yeah. and drink some coffee. But really you look at Dolores who is so happy but has to cover her ears for the noise and Camilo. Oh, I mean, Camilo's excited, right? That's his brother and he's got this gift. He's so excited for him. Like Luis has got these really big athletic claps going back there. I think Isabella has a little, little princess clap. So these are all very specific decisions uh, on behalf of our animators going in there and doing all of those individually. Again, that takes an enormous amount of time, but gives you this amazing specificity so that you understand each character is coming from a different place and has a different personality. <laughs> I 
listening to the score and as we transitioned into this beautiful Afro-Colombian choir mm -hmm. that Jermaine sought out. The choir was in Colombia, Jermaine was here and recording this amazing music to the score and, and it just adds so much and it just literally takes me and puts me into. Yeah this space. This is a great frame to talk about the transition between the sort of like more roomy aspects and like the jungly aspects, which was like really based on an idea from one of our artists named Camille Andre, mm -hmm. who did this awesome painting of these tiles that were sort of like turning into moss. And it inspired this whole idea of like sort of room transitioning into wild. Basically, I think the directive was like make the bedroom that like literally every little kid <laughs> yeah. would dream of having. And it's that, like it's just the natural environment just blending into this room, these little like, toadstools all over the tree and like the I love the lights that are sort of throughout all the trees in this little rope bridge and uh yeah I just I think the natural world blending with the kind of casita of it all is so cool in this scene just a little shout out to our environments team who oh, yes. designed it and built it and worked with our botanist our Colombian cultural trust oh, to yeah. make sure all of the plants mm -hmm. and and the animals and everything was exactly as it should be. This particular set is based on like a very particular rainforest called the Chocó Rainforest in Colombia. Each one of these little lights that you see are these, these little glass globes, right? Everywhere you look. So these had to be placed by hand, every single one of these things. And they go up through here, they're up in here, they're up in here, they're back in here. It is a, an immense amount of attention to detail. Um, but I think that when you see this whole scene, like. Your brain can't see all those things individually, but you just get this amazing feel. What we really were hoping for that it would feel like the most special room ever created for this five-year-old kid. That is absolutely wonderful for him. But then again, at the same time, you realize, oh, these are all the things that Mirabel didn't get. This wonderful moment, this wonderful celebration, this brand new space that's so fantastical, she missed out on, and that's really, really hard. It's such a huge emotional part of the film. This is such an important scene because we are all there with her and with little Antonio as they're walking down the aisle, wondering, is that magic going to work? Is it going to be there? 